Shouldn't do that too hard to this guitar. I should just put a Bigsby on it. No, no, it's totally fine. Actually, amazingly, I just pulled this guitar out from under the couch. It's been here for probably a month and uh, still in tune. Awesome guitar. Now, uh, today is just a little bit of tongue in cheek. There's a few things I'm being fairly serious about. Uh, I want you guys to hang around and listen to the last point. Uh, I'm just having a little bit of a laugh, but there's probably something behind it, but I'm sure you'll all understand. A little bit of fun though. If you do have an abusive comment, just stick it below. It's totally fine. And yeah, and also I would never really point out someone's mistakes, so to speak, but there's just a few pitfalls here that I think might be good to talk about in terms of, uh, you know, if you're a rockabilly player, maybe try and get around these things, especially if you want to be interesting and creative to listen to and want to develop your own style to some degree. So, this is a video, obviously you've seen the title, uh, Five Mistakes That Rockabilly Guitar Players Commonly Make. So, uh, the first one that I want to bring up, we'll call it number five and we'll count down to number one because that's kind of fun. Number five is too much delay and reverb, okay? Just remember, if you're playing a gig and you're playing in a big room, you're going to have a lot of natural reverb, a lot of organic reverb. So having a lot of delay, having a lot of reverb, it's it, you're going to end up sounding a little bit washed out and you're going to have a hard time getting through the mix. So that's something I learnt the hard way from doing gigs. I slowly just found I needed less and less reverb and needed to really tighten up that delay sound. You know, maybe less repeats. Or whatnot. You can check out uh, some of my videos where I talk about that stuff. Uh, jump on my channel and, and have a look through. You'll find them. They're not too far down the list. So, uh, and and that's I'm a, I play in a professional rockabilly touring band. We do all, a lot of the Sun Records stuff, and I've had the uh, the privilege of playing some really nice big venues. And I did pub work and all that kind of stuff. But it was a very consistent experience that you don't need too much of that stuff. Okay. So that's number five. Uh, number four. I've put here too much minor pentatonic, not enough major pentatonic. If you're a rockabilly player and you're only really using pe minor pentatonic bass ideas, okay, uh, you're missing out. That's probably the way I would put it. Uh, you really want to learn these guys as well, though. Your major pentatonics. Now, that itself didn't sound particularly rockabilly but you will find ways to blend it. So when you start blending it, that it really works when we sort of go. You know, and even learning your major scale is gonna be really important to get that. You know, that's like, this is minor, and then this would be major, and then minor, major. I've got videos on that as well, so check them out. And don't forget, please like this video if you're enjoying it. Please do comment if you do think of something. And don't be afraid to check out my Patreon. Uh, well, probably more importantly, my other videos. You'll find more relevant things to my Patreon there, like lesson tabs and there's scrolling tab videos. Anyway, keeping on moving. Um, number three. Now, I might put a few noses out of joint with this one. But don't dedicate yourself too much to Brian Setzer, okay? Now, you're gonna go, whoa, man, that's like, so no, he's amazing. I'm not saying don't listen to Brian Setzer, but the true spirit of doing what Brian Setzer did and cultivating a sound is that he knew, he spent a lot of time learning the stuff before. Eddie Cochran, Dwayne Eddy, Scotty Moore, Carl Perkins, Cliff Gallup, Grady Martin. You gotta go and listen to all of those guys don't just sit there learning Brian Setzer licks, okay? Because you're just going to sound like Brian Setzer. And the amazing thing about Brian Setzer is he, he, he sounds like Brian Setzer and you know it's him. You don't hear him and go, wait, is that Cliff Gallup or is that Brian Setzer? You don't. You still know it's Brian Setzer, which I think is really damn cool. So hopefully you've heard the end of that and haven't clicked off the video and hit dislike and sent me an abusive email, which I would probably find enjoyable anyway. However, if you do want to sound just like Brian Setzer, that even that's not an easy thing to achieve. So certainly give yourself a pat on the back if you have done that and that makes you happy. That's totally, that's also cool. 
but surely you get my point. So uh, the next one, so that was number three. Number number two, okay. So we're getting close to number one. I'm gonna have fun with number one. Uh, number two, only playing cliches. Now, there's a lot of rockabilly cliches or catch cry licks, and I do think you should learn them and you want to learn them so you're educated and you understand the style. Uh, you know, even things like, but you should spend time working off of those ideas and mixing them up. If you look at all the really great players at the moment, um, even Daryl Hyam's a great example. You know, he's kind of got his own little things that he does. He's, I, I, could, I haven't studied this, but I know, for example, that he'll do something like... He does some kind of triplet role. Maybe someone on there can point me to a good video where he does it. Maybe I can break that down because I really, I remember hearing that technique when I saw him live actually and thinking that's really cool. But that's what I mean. So for example, he has things he does that I don't hear other guys do, yet he knows those catch cries as well, but has developed his own style. So keep that in mind, learn the cliches, but also try to develop them a little bit. I think that's a really great thing to do. So number one, the number one mistake that rockabilly's, rockabilly guitar players make and I'm going to roll a couple together here. One, not enough tattoos. Two, the wrong hairstyle. Three, the wrong clothes. And four, I've done like four insights, like a sub subclass. Uh, the, the other one was, uh, don't dro you, they don't drive a hot rod. So, if you haven't got all those things together, I'm sorry, you're in big trouble. Just thought I'd let you know. Also, I really do like tattoos. Don't be offended if you've got tattoos. I think, I think a lot of you guys will know my point. You can't make rockabilly music and you can't do it well if you don't have all those things together. You know, you can't even have them like uniquely individual, like, hey, you've got really cool tattoos, but you don't have a hot rod, sorry, you're, you're out, you can't play rockabilly. I have none of the things that I mentioned, so this is obviously tongue in cheek and a little bit of a laugh, so abusive comments below, let's go. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you got a little laugh at that last one, maybe you didn't appreciate it, I don't know, it's just a joke, but I think you get what I mean. And uh, I especially think a lot of the people that follow this channel and appreciate where I come from, with understanding the music, that for me is number one. And actually you don't need any of those things. Great if you do, because you love that style and I do too. But I definitely want a lot of you guys out there that are learning this stuff to don't feel bad, uh, to not feel bad if you, you know, I mean, I don't even really have much hair under here. That's why I wear a hat all the time. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Check out the, the, the rest of the videos and, and yeah, let me know what you think. See you later.